Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hi everyone, I'm now going to talk about the concept of matrix, the basic concept, before talking about its important application in later presentation. We begin with the definition, element, and dimension of matrix. Then we'll be talking about matrix operations. It includes the brief explanation about such common matrix operation as summation, subtraction, multiplication, division, and scalar multiplication, as well as the algebraic laws. We will also see how types of matrix differ and give some unique significance in matrix operation. Last but not least important, summation notation of sigma is mostly expressible in matrices and vice versa. Therefore, it also needs to be discussed when talking about the matrix operation. Lastly, we'll be talking about how matrix equation system is arranged, replacing the common expression of an equation system. We will see how significant matrix is in math after we do it. Okay, let's start now. Similar to set, we group something in matrix. This may look familiar to you. Examples of sets. We may have set A, set B, or more specifically, set of real numbers, set of foods, and so on. Now, look at this. It's called matrix A, matrix B, matrix of coefficient, matrix of variables, and so on. We put things that have similar and unique characteristics together in both sets and matrices. They are for sure have elements. Elements of sets are here. Elements of matrix are here. However, in matrices, the elements are located in a rectangular array. Moreover, the array consists of either numbers, parameters, or variables only, thus always allowing calculation to be made. So simply, we may define matrix like this. Now, let's check again our matrices. After knowing the elements, we can identify the so-called dimension of matrix. It is determined by finding number of rows and columns of the respective matrix. So, the first matrix here is said to have dimension 2 times 2 because it has 2 rows and 2 columns. The dimension of the other matrices can also be identified easily here. Row number always persists the column number. Knowing dimension of particular matrix is important since to do some operation in matrix requires specific dimension criteria from each matrix. Matrices that have specific dimension are worth giving them specific names also because of their importance uh, later on. The first is called square matrix because the matrix rectangle is square or number of its row in its columns are the same. Here are the examples. The second one is called factor. Matrix that only has one column like this is called column factors. On the other hand, when the matrix only has one row, it is called row factor. Here is the example. And the row vector is usually symbolized with this prime symbol, indicating the transpose of the column vector. Let us now talk about matrix operation. The first operation is matrix addition or subtraction. The rule is simple. Matrices must have the same dimensions. As we can easily observe here, the two matrices both have 2 times 2 dimension. And this is the general form. I and J represents number of row and column. The summation or subtraction involves matrices with same dimension I and J, and so does the sum matrix. The second operation is uh, scalar multiplication. It is multiplying a matrix with scalar numbers like this. Here we multiply every element of the matrix by 7. In general, here is the rule as it looks. Each element of the matrix is multiplied by a scalar number. The last operation is matrix multiplications. Here we have two matrices A and B with different, different dimensions. 
To find the product AB, we need to meet the conformability conditions for multiplications. That is, the column dimension of A or the lead matrix must be equal to the row dimension of B or the leg matrix. And the result, the product AB, will have this dimension. How to do the multiplications? Look at this example. Two matrices, A and B. We can easily identify that the column dimension of A is the same with the row dimension of B. Both dimensions are 2. Then we calculate AB like this. We sum the multiplication of the column elements of the matrix A's first row and the row elements of the matrix B's first column, resulting in this. Then the same column element of matrix A's first row with the row elements of the matrix B's second row, resulting in this. We can do the rest and resulting in this. And in general, this is how to do the multiplication. In ordinary scalar algebra, additive and multiplicative operations obey the commutative, associative, and distributive laws. Here are the laws. All the algebraic laws except the commutative law of multiplications apply in matrix operations. The commutative law only applies in matrix in these three conditions. While the distributive law, it also applies but with one condition, when all the multiplications meet the conformability condition. In other words, all the matrix multiplications must be multiplicable. From matrix operation, there are matrices that have specific characteristics, thus worth mentioning. First is identity matrix. It is a square matrix that has 1 as its diagonal elements and 0 for the remaining elements. It is expressible in any matrix with di uh, different dimension as long as the matrix is square. Identity matrix serves just like the number 1. It is possible to insert or delete an identity matrix without affecting the matrix products like this. And multiplication of any matrix with identity matrix will also result in the matrix itself like this. One more thing, as mentioned in the previous slide, given a square matrix, the commutative law applies in this multiplication. AI is equal to IA. The second type of matrix is a null matrix. The matrix doesn't have to be square as long as all the elements are zero. So just like zero is number, summation and multiplication will just result like this. Then we have transpose matrix. It is obtained by inter interchanging the rows and columns of one particular matrix. All matrices can be transposed. Remember our column factor earlier here? It has three rows and one column. After the transpose, now we have the row factor with one row and three columns. The elements are the same, but the locations are switched from row to column and vice versa. The same is true for matrix A here. The transpose matrix is denoted by the prime symbol or big letter T like this. And it is worth noting as well the following properties of the transpose matrix. Lastly, we have the inverse matrix. The matrix is denoted by this power of minus 1, so it reads as inverse of matrix A. Inverse matrix is a square matrix and originated from a square matrix too. But not all square matrices have inverse as we will see later. We are not doing the calculation of the inverse right now. Let us now just check the properties. And here I just want to highlight the most unique feature of inverse matrix, this one. Any matrix multiplied with its inverse will result in an identity matrix. It will give us a practical significance later when we talk about finding solution using matrix theorem. The last property is what was mentioned before when we were talking about the algebraic law. Commutative law applies for multiplication, multiplication of a matrix with its inverse. Okay, now we recall a little bit about the degradation on sigma or summation notation. Remember this sigma? 
with i is from 1 to 3, then the sigma of xi equals to the summation of x from x1 to x3. In the second example, now we add uh, scalar number a. Since a is a constant factor, it only attaches to the x without changing value. In the summation, only x changes, but a doesn't. In the third example, however, a is no longer a constant factor. Just like the x, a now also changes. When i is 1, then we have a1, x1. When i is 2, we have a1, x2. And when i is 3, we have a3, x3. So here we go, we get the summation of ax. Sigma also helps us express the mathematical operation in matrix. We may have this matrix equation. A is representing the coefficient matrix, X is the variable matrix, and D is the constant matrix. Obviously here, D is a product matrix resulting from AX multiplication. Each element of D matrix is obtained from the summation below. We can observe that all the summation can be expressed using the sigma notation. Look, for example, in D1 calculation, we assign K in our sigma for numbers or dim dimension in both matrix A and matrix X that change from 1 to 3. We do the same, uh, we do the same when finding D2 and D3 and express them, express them in sigma. With this calculation, then we can express D in more general, like this. D may range not only from 1 to 3, but maybe to M. Lastly, we may have this matrix equation. The product matrix is now represented by C, resulting from multiplication of matrix A and matrix B. Just like before, we can calculate all the elements of matrix C, then express them all in sigma notation. For the elements in the first row, we have C11, C12, and C13 calculated and expressed in sigma notation like this. Dimension that change together from 1 to 2 are column dimension of matrix A and row dimensions of matrix B. Hence, we assign a scalar number K in our sigma for this. The element of matrix C in the second and the third row are also similar. We assign K again for the column dimension of matrix A and row dimension of matrix B. Then again, we can write the general form of multiplication of matrix A with M times N dimension and matrix B with N times P dimension like this. The column dimension of matrix A and row dimension of matrix B change following number of k, as they are the source of doing the matrix multiplication. On the other hand, the row dimension of matrix A and column dimension of matrix B change depending on row and column dimension of C in question, that is the i and j.